Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Grady Tech and in this video, I'll be showing you the most important tips and tricks for your Redmi K20 Pro. By the way guys, I'll also be making a dedicated video for the best features where I'll be showing you all the features offered by this phone. So definitely check out that video, link will be in the description. Now with that said, I'll first start off with my favorite feature on this phone, that would be the dark mode. I've been literally waiting for years for the dark mode, I've tried using themes but they were not perfect. But finally, this phone now has a dedicated dark mode. So to enable it, you need to go to settings, then select display. Now you have it over here. That's the dark mode. And once you enable it, everything, all the UI elements are turned to black because of the AMOLED display. Blacks look truly black. And now the phone looks much cooler and it strains your eyes less at night. So it's a win-win situation. And as I've said, it also looks pretty damn cool. So that's the dark mode. And for some reason, if you don't like it, you can disable it once again from display settings. Just disable this toggle and that feature will be disabled. Now the next awesome feature on this phone would be the always on display. Now this is always on display. By default, it is not turned on. Xiaomi calls it ambient display. So whenever you get a notification, you'll see a screen like this. But if you want to turn on always on display or if you want to use ambient display all the time, that's basically always on display. This is what you need to do. Go to settings, then select display. Now select ambient display. Now, if you enable this toggle, always on, ambient display will be on all the time. Now, it will drain some battery, maybe like 5% for an entire day. But if you want to save some battery, you can schedule it to automatically turn on and turn off at a specific time using this toggle over here. Next, you also get some cool animations with always on display. So if you want to change them, just click on it over here. Now you get all these different animation styles for your always on display. So pick the one that you like. And once you go back and turn off your screen, that particular style or animation is fixed. So that's always on display. Now this phone also comes with an in-display fingerprint scanner and this is the animation that you get right out of the box. Now for some reason if you don't like it and if you want to change it, this is what you need to do. First unlock the phone, obviously. Now go back a step, go to settings then select lock screen and password. Now select fingerprint, manage fingerprint, enter your password and now select fingerprint animation. Now these are the four different animation styles we have. We have starlight. This is how it looks like. Next we have neo. Next we have rhythm. And finally pulse. I'll just go with rhythm. It looks much cooler. Next this one also comes with a pop-up camera. That's where the front camera is hidden. And every time it pops up, you get that cool LED effect and an annoying sound. So if you hate that or if you want to change anything related to that, this is what you need to do. First go to settings, then select additional settings. Now select front camera settings. Now, if you don't like that LED light glowing whenever the front camera pops up, you can disable it. So whenever front camera pops up, now there is no light. In the same way, if you don't like that annoying sound, personally, I don't like it. You can disable it to turn off the sound. So here we go. Now we can just hear the mechanical motor sound. Now there is no tune to it. Now, for some reason, if you want to change that tune, we also have six different tunes to choose from. I kind of like it. So let's give it a try. Okay, I've turned off the effect as well. I'll turn it on. And here we go. Now it looks or feels more like a transformer phone. Anyway, if you don't like it, you can always disable it just like that. Now going on next, I'll show you some camera related features and we'll start off with the triple camera setup. So this phone has a triple camera setup and by default, it always opens up in the primary camera. So that is 1x and if you click this dot on the right side, you use the 2x zoom. And finally, if you click the dot on the left side, you'll switch to the wide angle camera. Now, besides that, we can also do a nice pinch to zoom gesture to switch to the primary camera and then to the secondary telephoto lens. So that's a pretty cool gesture and you can easily switch between cameras with just a gesture. Now going on next, this phone comes with a 48 megapixel camera, but by default, it takes pictures only in 12 megapixels using a technique called pixel binning. Now, if you want to take 48 megapixel pictures, you have a dedicated mode for that over here. And now whenever you take a picture, you're getting a truly 48 megapixel picture. Now, if you check out the portrait mode, we have some extra options over here, which were not available on other phones like say Redmi Note 7 Pro or even the Poco F1. Now on this phone, you can actually change the amount of background blur effect you want before taking a picture 
by just doing this. Now if you keep the number low, you get maximum blur effect and if you increase the aperture, you won't get any blur effect. Besides that, you also have 3D lighting effects, so you can check them out from here. These are all the different lighting effects, just like the latest iPhones. Next, this one also comes with a dedicated night mode to take better pictures in low lighting conditions. Now, if we go to video recording, this one can record video in 1080p and 4K resolution at 60fps, and it even offers electronic image stabilization. So that's pretty cool. Now, let's check out the front-facing camera. So we got that front camera and even for the front camera while taking portrait shots we have 3D lighting effects so once again we can choose between all these different lighting effects and for the first time we can even change the amount of background blur effect we get before taking a picture. So that's pretty cool once again. Now this is a sample portrait shot taken with the rear camera and if you click this button you get some extra options. So the first one is to change the amount of background blur effect. Now we can't zoom in but I hope you can clearly see it. So I can touch to focus. So now the background is blurred out and the subject is in focus. Now if I change the aperture to say f1.0, you can see the increase in blur effect. Now if I touch the background, the foreground will be blurred. So this is the new cool feature. Next we have lighting trails. So we can make cool effects like that. It's just fun to play with. Next we have studio lighting effects once again. Now to use them, subject needs to be pretty close, so that's why it's not working, but we can use it even after taking a picture. Now the same thing can be done even with selfies. So here's a portrait selfie. Once again, if you click this button, you get extra options. We can once again increase the amount of background blur effect, and now it's blown out. Now for portrait selfies, only the subject will be in focus, we can't change the focus point. And besides that, you also still get studio lighting effects, and you can apply them even after taking a picture if the subject is a bit closer. Next, this one also has Google Lens integrated into the camera application. You can access it from here. And now to search for anything, you just need to point at it and Google search will do its magic. And with just a click of a button, you can search for anything using your camera application. Next, we have slow motion video recording. So on this one, we can even record video at 960 FPS. So that's pretty cool. That's 120 FPS. Next, we have 240 FPS. And finally, 960 FPS. This is also a pretty neat trick. Now this phone also comes with a new gesture to take pictures or selfies using the palm gesture. To enable it, you need to access it from here. And once you're done, you can just show your palm to take a selfie after 3 seconds. So that's 3 seconds and it just took a selfie. So that's a pretty cool gesture. Now this is a picture that I just took and you can clearly see those watermarks and timestamps. If you want it, you can keep it, but if you hate it and if you want to remove them, this is what you need to do. Go to the camera application, then go to settings. And now if you don't want that watermark, disable this toggle. And if you don't want that timestamp, disable this toggle. Now I'll show you one of my favorite features on any Xiaomi phone. That's the full screen gestures. So to enable that, go to settings and now select full screen display. Now select full screen gestures. Now once you do that, navigation bar is completely hidden. And now we can use gestures. And by the way guys, make sure you enable this particular toggle. And you have some quick instructions over here, just in case if you want to check them out. But here's a quick preview. Now if you want to go to the home screen, you can do a swipe up gesture from the bottom to go home. And if you want to check out recent apps, you can swipe up from the bottom and hold for recent apps. If you want to go back a step, or like press a back button, you can swipe from the left side or right side to go back. Now, as you can see, there is no navigation bar, so you might wonder how to trigger Google Assistant. So, this phone also has a neat little trick for that. So, to make it work, first we need to enable a toggle. For that, go to settings, then select additional settings, then select buttons. And finally, make sure you enable this particular toggle. Once you do that, you can just press and hold the power button to trigger Google Assistant. How is the weather? Right now in Hyderabad. And so, whenever you just Press and hold it, you get Google Assistant. And if you press and hold it for like three seconds, you get power options. And there we go. Here are the top search results starting. So these are the gestures and I really love them. And so far, these are the best implementation for navigation. I guess even Google copied it from Xiaomi for Android Q. Anyway, do give them a try. These gestures are really awesome. Next, I'll show you how to use split screen mode on this phone. Now, if you're using gestures, there is only one way to use split screen mode. First, you need to go to the recent apps page. 
then press and hold on the application that you want to open in split screen and then click this button to open that application in the top window and you can select the secondary application from the list over here or else you can go to the home screen and then select the secondary application now if you are using a navigation bar like if you're not using gestures let me just enable that so if you are using these buttons we have another little shortcut so to enable it go to additional settings then select buttons and now select open split screen and select long press menu button once you do that you can simply press and hold this button recent apps button to open split screen mode now going on next split screen mode has been on android for a very very long time but even now all the applications are still not supported so to fix that or to use all applications in split screen mode this is what you can do first go to settings then select about phone now click on miui version seven times once you do that developer options will be enabled now go to additional settings then select developer options and scroll to the bottom enable force activities to be resizable now once you do that and restart your phone you will be able to use all applications in split screen mode this is something i would definitely recommend you to do now going on next if you want to display battery percentage and network usage on the status bar this is what you need to do first go to settings then select notifications and status bar and enable this toggle to check out network speed on the status bar if you want to see notification icons on the status bar enable this toggle or disable it to hide them i keep it on next if you want to see the battery percentage just select this option battery indicator and select percentage you also have other options like graphical and top bar if you want a minimalistic design now going on next i'll show you how to record calls automatically on your phone so for that open the phone dialer now click this button over here and then select call recording and once you enable this toggle all the calls will be recorded automatically now this feature is available in india but might not be available in other countries so if you can't find this feature try to use any third party application next i'll show you how you can change your default launcher default browser and so on so for that let's go to settings there are actually two ways to do it one way to do it is to select this option home screen and recent from here you can change your default launcher just select that and now i have nova launcher installed so i can click nova launcher and when i press home it takes me to the nova launcher and now i even have an app draw that looks like this so another way to change your default launcher is to go to settings now once you're in settings scroll down and select manage apps now click this button over here and select default apps now from this page you can change your default dialer default messaging application default browser i'll set it to google chrome you can even change your default music player gallery application and so on by the way from this page you can't change the default launcher if you want to change your launcher you need to use home screen and recents so from here you can change your default launcher now if you want to take a screenshot on this phone there are three different ways to do that first one is to use the buttons just press the volume down and power button both at the same time and your phone will take a screenshot just like that if that's a bit hard for you you also have a toggle just swipe down and click this button screenshot to take a screenshot now another fancy way to take a screenshot is to use the three finger gesture just swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot now for some reason if this doesn't work for you this is what you need to do first go to settings then select additional settings buttons now select take screenshot and select slide three fingers down once you do that you can take a screenshot by swiping down three fingers next we can also take long screenshots on this phone so if you want to take longer screenshots first take a regular screenshot you can either use the buttons toggle or the gesture i'm lazy so i'll use the gesture now click this preview and select scroll once you do that the page will be scrolled automatically and if you are satisfied you can click done or once it reaches the end it will automatically stop i'll just click done and now we got a long screenshot so here we go so guys these are the most important tips and tricks for your redmi k20 pro if i missed out on anything important do let me know by commenting below this video and if you're planning to buy this phone use the link in the description and by the way guys definitely check out that video on the best features link will be in the description and finally if you want us to make any specific video or if you have any questions for us tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible i'm nikhil from greedy tech signing off have a nice day